All right, if you're following along, we're talking about blending modes now in After Effects, just like Photoshop or Premiere or whatever else, but we're gonna go into how I use them so that you can maybe use them for your motion design. So I have this logo here of my logo, basically, that's this very soft blue, and let's say it's a little flat. I wanted to add some texture to this. So what I would do first is I would pre-compose this layer with my texture. So I have this texture on top and right now it's set to opacity 24% but if I set it to 100 it's just this it's this really grungy like just stop motiony sort of look and uh, yeah it looks kind of cool but um, what, what's the point behind this and if I wanted to apply this to the logo how do I do that well what I would do if I wanted to have it affect just the logo let's just duplicate that grunge texture and select the logo by holding control and clicking and then control shift C and we'll call this uh, blending mode texture logo PC. Okay, click okay. And then we'll go in there and we have this blending mode on top. Let's just set the mode to say screen. Sure, and what the screen setting will do is it will get rid of the blacks on the logo. So it's still affecting everything else around this though. I want it to basically have be cut out by the logo. So another fun fact we'll talk about in the next video, but you can hit this button, the preserve transparency, and it will just look at whatever's below it. And as long as it's transparent via the transparency grid, it will overlay on anything that has RGB color information. So now the texture is on that logo. Let's maybe change the blending modes to like just something that looks cool. So, oh, that looks kind of funky and cool. Cool, all right, that works. And then we can go back to our main composition right here. And, oh, I have that grunge still on. We can turn that off. Hey, look, there's the logo doing the thing. And we achieve that by getting that preserved transparency. And then the uh, blending mode by multiply. So it's basically just overlaying in different ways. If you hold shift and then the plus or minus signs on your keyboard, you can cycle through your blending modes and get some pretty unique and interesting looks. I normally use overlay and and soft light and multiply and screen and add, but hey, sometimes you can get some cool stuff as well. Second through. Yeah, let's just go with linear light at the moment. Let's just bring this out. Okay. So there's blending modes on a logo, all right? So that's pretty sweet. Next, we have this Saber layer right here. And Saber is a plugin by Video Copilot. It is free, so you can get some cool lightsaber effects. But the problem is it's black. And the issue is that there's no settings in here that allows us to be like, no, don't be black. Just show me everything behind it. So let's say I needed to add a lightsaber effect over onto my footage. What do I do? Well, if we set this mode to screen, hey look, there's the lightsaber and we can move that around, do fun stuff like that. And then what's also cool about the saber plugin is you can just make some text, let's just say Jags and then center that up, put that over here. And then you can set your core to be your saber. Right there, turn down the glow intensity, turn down, just turn this stuff down and then turn off that and hey look, there's the text. And if we didn't have the blending mode on the saber effect set to screen, it would just be that. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you recall from the continuously rasterized video from a couple weeks ago, then you'll remember that blending modes are rendered after pre-comps. So basically it will not work if we pre-compose this. So let's just pre-compose this saber pre-C and won't preserve that. But if we continuously rasterize it, bam, there you go. So blending modes are super cool. You can do some really cool things with them. Most of the time, it's just 
trial and error, trying to get something that looks cool for a texture or getting things to composite correctly. So blending modes, play with them. You'll use them all the time. But uh, yeah, those are some basic ways in which I use blending modes for my motion design. Last thing I'll show you really quick is adding this grunge texture to the entire thing. If I wanted to just like get rid of the white, let's just set that to multiply and then maybe set the opacity to like 20%. And then if we let's just get rid of the saber so it's a little bit easier to see. Now this entire thing has a, that very faint texture. If we turn off that and maybe bring up the opacity so we can see a little bit more and set it to screen instead. Oh God, now it's a little bit easier to see. But it's gonna brighten things up. And then what I would do is I would hold Alt on my keyboard and cycle through my shape tool until I get to my ellipse. Double click that and it's going to add a mask around it invert it, hit F on the keyboard, and feather it a lot. So now it's gonna be pretty isolated to the center. Let's turn on that logo once again. Maybe change the timing so it's not identical each time. So yeah, blending modes, great for texturing, great for compositing. Do the thing, it's awesome. Yeah. All right, that's today's quick tip. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Like if you learned something, and if you need more help, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Again, my name is John Jagsney. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch my face because you're not getting it back, so I hope it was worth it. And I will leave you with this. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You will make some gains, I promise. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Where's my lens cap? Bye. Put the place up.